Thank you, Nathan. Well, for more on the situation in Ukraine and its new president, we're joined by Andrew Boreen. He's the Truman National Security Project Defense Council advisor. Andrew is also a teacher. He teaches public affairs at American University here in Washington. So, Andrew, your reaction to the speech, Mr. Um, Poroshenko said he does not want war, he does not want revenge. Did he hit all the right notes? Yeah, I think he definitely gave a, a, a really tremendous speech uh, in his inaugural introduction as the president of uh, Ukraine in the wake of that May 25th election. Um, and I think a, a very significant piece of his speech for anyone watching was that he delivered a piece of it in the Russian language, which, as you know, will be very important as he seeks to reconcile the country uh, and create space for uh, ethnic Russians living in his territory. What does Mr. Pot uh, Poroshenko have to do to unite this very divided country? Um, he has significant work ahead of him. Um, his challenges are not merely related to the uh, paramilitary challenges in the East uh, and the Russian annexation of Crimea. They're also related to rebuilding an economy uh, that has struggled uh, and establishing a general faith in government, even from those who have been his supporters uh, in this election. So um, I think he has significant challenges. He also has significant allies uh, in the United States and European Union. Some of the separatists have dismissed the speech, saying they would never surrender. What does that mean for any potential ceasefire? Well, I think in any political or uh, violent confrontation situation, uh, there are actors across a spectrum of political interests and commitment. Um, and I think it's important here to note that a, a, a more significant movement would be Russian political cooperation. Uh, if the Russians decide to politically cooperate uh, and establish some sort of functioning diplomacy with uh, the president and his administration of, in Ukraine um, and remove support for the paramilitaries in the form of arms and uniforms and some of the other things that they're suspected of doing, um, I think that would go a long way toward reducing the tensions in Crimea and eastern Ukraine. Well, speaking of Russia, they actually sent an ambassador to the inauguration. How how big of a step was that? How significant was that? Um, I believe it was very significant. Uh, Mikhail Zurovov, the uh, ambassador to Ukraine from Russia, attended, uh, delivered some initial feedback that he was um, uh, receptive to some of the message delivered about things like amnesty. Um, and I believe his comments afterwards were uh, that he was, uh, again, receptive to the message the president delivered um, with some, some additional uh, important pieces about allowing access by humanitarian organizations. Um, and I think those are reasons uh, for hope in the situation. You know, in every political crisis, the key a lot of times is the situation on the ground. Mm -hmm. How much fighting is going on? How much violence is going on? What are you hearing as far as the troops that Russia had massed along the border? Any movement? Uh, well, last week there were reports uh, that some of those troops had begun moving away from the border. Um, I believe Secretary of Defense Hagel from the United States had mentioned that would be a positive move and uh, that verification of those movements, of course, would be important. Um, and if that were happening, I think that's a very positive step. Another positive step would be, uh, again, uh, a reduction in the support that the paramilitaries are getting uh, from uh, Russian special forces or from uh, arms, equipment, uniforms, that type of thing. Andrew, this conflict has been going on for months. A lot of people have lost their lives. Are you optimistic, are you hopeful that with uh, Petro Poroshenko's inauguration, perhaps the crisis will, there's light at the end of the tunnel, should I say? Um, I think this is a, a reason to be hopeful. Uh, the remarks from President Poroshenko delivered in part in Russian, uh, the participation of the ambassador, uh, the support that the president and his administration will have from his allies in the U.S. and the EU, uh, and we hope uh, establishing some form of functional working relationship with the Russians uh, could lead to a reduction in violence. And I think uh, that's what all parties want in this situation. Okay. Thank you so very much, Andrew Boreen. Thank you.